Our horror story begins with a young lady walking alone in a subway. She is Eva, who looks at a digital clock there to see the late hour. Her phone rings and she simply looks at it without answering. She sees a man on the other side of the tracks who has his back turned to her. It is a moment that accumulates tension. When he starts walking away, Eva looks somewhat relieved. She watches the man walk until he exits the subway. But with his leave comes something worse. Eva now sees another man walking on the tracks. We don't see the continuation of it. The scene changes to Eva sitting at her friend's place. The friend is Milo's, bringing some drinks for both of them. He tells her that he thought she would not call him anymore. The girl doesn't respond. She asks to use his phone, which he gives her. For some reason, she has to enter another room with it. There, she looks in the mirror to see a black wound or a mark on her stomach. Then she starts doing something with Milo's phone that involves using her phone too. It seems like she could be transferring something very unpleasant from it. Once Eva has completed the task, she leaves the room, giving Milo's a fake excuse that she has to go. Before she does, she tells him the worrying words that he must download it to someone else. What she means by it, we currently don't know. Yet we should expect it to be something that makes a person absolutely desire to get rid of it. Alone at his place, Milo's gets a message on his phone telling him that he will lose his life. However, it's not really a message directed at him, it's just the name of the app Eva very likely downloaded into his phone. What the app does, is offer its users a sinister camera view. Milo's pans it slowly around his room until it shows him a face behind his door's window. Lowering the phone shows him that nothing is there. As he occupies the washroom, he hears his phone ring. So he picks it up to see that it's the app that wants his attention. There is also a timer there too. It's set at over 22 hours now. He starts walking in an area where he recently heard a sound coming from. He opens a door and is startled by his pet hamster on the floor. The poor little creature is running around outside of its cage. Later, Milo sleeps on his couch and the app awakens him. It shows him a lady sitting on his chair. Seeing her injects him with fear. He is quickly forced to turn on his lamp. After that, the scene changes completely to show us a girl riding a bicycle from an overhead view. She soon stops at a place that is heavily decorated with graffiti and places two roses near the door. Then, we see a lady cooking at home while singing. The girl we just saw arrives with a man who is her brother. While the three of them eat, the lady informs them they are eating out tomorrow. When she says she made a reservation for three, the brother, Filippo, asks if someone named Leo is not coming. Asia is the younger girl who rode her bike. Filippo says she is always talking about Leo. She will see him tonight, she says. Filippo gives her a present, two tickets to a concert. This excites Asia. At a different time, she comes home to her friend, Viola, with two big bags of groceries. Viola is a girl who isn't shy in expressing her liking for Asia's brother. She expresses it to the point of indecency. Afterward, she starts talking about dating apps. Asia says she would never use one, but Viola says they never took anyone's life. They don't have to, because what worries Asia is that she could catch a disease by using a dating app. Later, the two girls watch television. Viola asks Asia where Leo is. In a few seconds, the doorbell buzzes. Asia answers the door to see the man who was mentioned. He holds a few pizza boxes for them. We can see that Leo is a man who knows how to have a good time. At another hour, the girls are at a store while Leo is at the girl's place. We see a person enter the store who is soon revealed to be Milo. He appears distressed. It's probably safe to assume that enough time has passed for the app to ruin his life. His phone rings and he looks at it in fear. He uses the app to look in the aisle that Asia occupies. There is a person he perceives through the camera that frightens him even more. Furthermore, his timer is down to about 10 minutes. Milo's decides to start talking to Asia. He comes up with an excuse to use her phone. He sees a person slowly walking toward him without his phone. Upon turning around, Asia doesn't see anyone. At this point, it seems like Milo's can see these people, whoever they are, without the app. Then a car pulls up somewhere. A man is there with Eva, intending to have some fun with her. He is rude to the girl not caring about what she wants. Thankfully, Eva does not care that he doesn't care, so she does what she wants, which is stepping outside. The man joins her after a short while. As he starts coming on to her, she says she wants to make a video. To do that, she asks for his phone. While he's busy with her, he doesn't see what she's doing on his phone. Instead of shooting a video, she is downloading the app into his phone, the same one that she downloaded into Milo's. We have to wonder why she's doing it again if she already did it. The man sees she's not shooting a video, prompting him to ask what she's doing. He wants his phone, but she refuses to give it until the download is finished. Due to this behavior of hers, he gets in his car to drive off. The man doesn't even bother to collect his phone, leaving the device with Eva. She can only scream in frustration. Before long, she gets a ring on it from the app. Using the phone shows Eva that someone is behind her. For a very brief moment, an arm comes out from the phone, causing her to drop it. Eva runs away as the phone lies on the ground. She runs into a tunnel, where someone blocks her path on the stairs. Turning back, she sees another sinister person blocking her there. Soon both of them grab the helpless girl and we don't see what happens to her. In the next scene, we return to the trio sitting at the girl's place. They are watching a scary movie while eating popcorn. Viola fakes having to make a call in another room to leave her girlfriend alone with Leo. While they're together, Asia's phone emits that awful ring associated with the app. It's the first time she sees it on her phone. Leo is curious to see what it is, so he has a look. He thinks it's a kind of game. 
He asks her when she downloaded it. Asia replies that she did not. The man notices there's a timer there with 23 remaining hours. He wonders what happens once it runs out. As he looks around the room with it, he sees a little girl instantly running away. Trying to follow her, Leo runs into Viola instead. After she moves to the side, he sees the youngster. She simply stands there, being seen by the trio on the app. They move closer to her. Since Leo tries touching where she would be in the real world, the girl glitches on the app. She suddenly looks at them to deliver a slight scare. This app is scaring Asia. Therefore she takes her phone to delete the frightening application. Unfortunately, it does not allow her to do so. If only it were that easy, Eva would still be alive. Interestingly, Asia says the timer went back one hour. It seems like if someone tries to cheat the app, the app cheats them. As the trio sits in the room with the television, we see the little girl still standing in the place they all looked at her. Leo says he could take Asia's phone to his friend who specializes in technology. He thinks that guy will be able to take it off. Then Viola says she's going to bed. In the process of walking away, she turns around to tell them in a scary voice that they will perish in seven days. Viola is most likely imitating a scene from the movie, The Ring. Alone with Leo, Asia says it's time for him to go. He's surprised that she's kicking him out, but it happens. She gets a ring from the app when she's alone. She uses it to see someone there. Of course, it scares her. Asia keeps using her phone until Viola scares her. Upset, she tells Viola she is studying. They start talking about Leo and Asia says they have been friends since elementary school. However, Viola isn't buying it, she thinks they're in love. She also thinks Asia is too dumb to admit it. Yet Asia doesn't want anything to change between them. While she sleeps, Asia gets woken up by her new app. She gets up to see she got a message from Leo. As she's looking at it, we see a person pass behind her. Asia then looks at herself in a black mirror that doesn't even give a reflection. She starts touching her eyes like they are giving her trouble. Shortly after, she wakes up from that dream. She goes to the kitchen, where she gets a notification from the app. Using it, she perceives two people that scare her. Although their presence is frightening, at least they don't do anything except stand in place. Asia is about to exit the room when the lady on the app turns her head to look at the girl. This makes her quickly go to bed, hiding herself with a blanket. Then she uses her phone to see the lady standing in her room. At one point, Asia sees the lady without her phone. Once that happens, she knows some sort of nightmare has begun. So she rushes into Viola's room for help. Fearfully, she explains to her friend what occurred. Viola tries calming her down, telling the girl they could sleep in the same bed. After that, we see them sleeping together. That horrible app rings again. Viola wakes up to take her phone, not Asia's. She enters the washroom with it. In a few seconds, someone passes by. Returning to the bedroom, she does not see the ghost lady who stands beside her sleeping friend. In the morning, Asia sits in the kitchen, looking into the app. Her mind has become affected as she blankly stares into the device. Viola talks to her, but she doesn't respond. When she starts speaking, her words are solely regarding the application. She says it has a mind of its own and turning the phone off only made it restart. Viola doesn't want this app to get to her. She takes the phone away, advising Asia to ride her bicycle. The next scene shows the girl doing exactly that. Alas, the problem doesn't go away outside. She sees a bum staring at her. Asia also sees someone standing at a distance straight ahead, looking her way. The person turns out to be none other than Viola, who yells something soundlessly. A substance comes out of her mouth that looks like blood. However, it seems a bit too dark to be that. Soon, a honking car brings Asia back to reality. While sitting at the place where she left the roses previously, her phone rings. She is frightfully surprised to find her phone in her backpack. Even without using it, she sees the ghost lady standing at quite a distance, eerily looking at her. Later, she comes home, angry at Viola because Asia thinks she put her phone in her backpack. Yet Viola tells her a different story. She says Asia came back to collect her phone one hour ago. It's not surprising that Asia does not believe her. She says she would remember if she came back. After the argument, Viola leaves. The poor girl didn't even do anything wrong. To make it worse, she left a pleasant note on Asia's door, calling her a sweetie. The guilt Asia would suffer if she knew her friend was innocent could be about as bad as the horrors that the app delivered. Following this, Asia visits her brother's girlfriend, Claudia. The reason is that she is a psychologist. Asia tells her she doesn't know what to believe anymore. What she sees in the app, she sees in reality. Claudia replies that it's real only due to Asia deciding to believe it's real. Shortly after, the girl is in a bathtub. We observe a headless man standing nearby. She looks at her arm, which has a message inscribed into it. Then the headless man grabs her neck, causing her to yell out to Claudia. The lady rushes to her, seeing Asia holding her own neck. Afterward, Claudia is nervous, saying that what Asia did to herself was serious. But Asia denies having done what Claudia accuses her of. She also attempts to show the message on her arm. Unfortunately, no one could see it except for Asia. It weighs heavily on the girl that Claudia can neither see it nor believe her. She wants the lady to understand that she can see the deceased. Of course, this cannot happen unless Claudia starts seeing them too. Subsequently, our heroine visits Leo at his home. She demands that they immediately visit his friend who specializes in technology. She shows him her arm, asking what he sees. He just sees her arm. The next scene has the duo at Leo's friend's place. He is Marco, saying the app is weird and that it cannot be removed as if it's part of the phone. The man does not find any information about it anywhere except on the dark web. 
according to him. He found links to police reports where people went insane because of the app. Marco adds that they all lost their lives. This alarms Asia. He shows them several photos of the people and says they all perished from cardiac arrest. Those who used the app claim to have been tortured by the non-living. It's no surprise that Leo doesn't believe any of this. Marco continues by saying all the people said there was a wound on their body that showed them a website link. Yet only they perceived it. The app seems to take over a person's mind. Once he says the owner of the app has 24 hours to give it to someone else, Asia says she has 5 hours left. Marco thinks the application has an effect on some people that triggers paranoia. Asia has a hard time accepting this information. To help her, the man says there is someone by the name of Mike Butler who made a blog orienting around the horrific app. Asia wants this individual found so she can talk to him. Then we see Milo's at his place, looking at himself in the mirror. The mark that Asia has on her arm, he has on his neck. There is also someone behind him. His phone rings, bringing him to it. The timer on his app tells him he has 5 hours left, just like Eva. He still has to engage in this experience despite having passed it on to Asia. It seems like it could be an endless process, where one has to keep passing it on to live for another 24 hours. But what kind of life is that? Milos uses his phone to look around. Soon a face appears to scare him to the floor. He looks at his phone, which got cracked from the fall. The timer on the app starts decreasing rapidly and he gets pulled into a room by a ghost we don't see. What we do see is the result, Milos having lost his life from fright. Back to the trio, Marco finds Mike on the internet and video calls him. The young man instantly knows the reason why he was called. He wears a smile, saying they want to know how he survived. Since she asks him if the horrors from the app are real, he laughs. Mike says they're more than real, they are alive. He also says that once the app is passed on to someone, the timer resets to 24 hours. It's a door to another dimension where lifelessness lives. He wants the girl to know that the deceased will take her life if she doesn't play the game. Mike says he used to care about other people. However, due to this app, he now hates everyone. Asia calls him a monster, despite being one. He gives her a few pointers for her to keep on living. He says she should not break her phone. If that happens, the timer goes to one minute, meaning it's game over. That is what we saw happen to Milo's. Also, one must not cheat or else the app will end its wielder's life. Yet our heroine is nothing like Mike. She doesn't want to pass it on to another person to ruin their life. Mike assures her she will resort to doing that. Seeing someone behind her, he laughs. After the conversation with Mike, Leo still doesn't believe any of this. He thinks Asia is being made fun of. She yells at him, saying she has seen it. He then challenges her to download the app to his phone. Asia yells again, saying she would never do that to him. Then she arrives at Claudia's office, wanting her help for the second time. She is losing her mind about what to do. Claudia is forced to slap her. After that, she tells Asia she believes her. She also says the girl is too weak to handle this. This talk confuses Asia. Soon Claudia tells her it's real. She shows her that she too has a mark, sitting beside Asia. The psychologist calmly yet strongly says that she accepted this app and lives with it every day without crying. Asia asks if she gave the app to Filippo. Claudia would never do that, she says. The people she gives it to are strangers. She has no choice. Asia claims she will find another solution that does not involve ruining people's lives, concluding their time together. Claudia threatens her by saying if Asia snitches to her brother, Claudia will just say she is insane. Her word as a psychologist will get Asia locked up in a clinic, where she will perish in less than one day due to not having a phone there. Following this, Asia sits outside, scared. Her app shows her that she only has 1 hour and 30 minutes left. She sees the deceased nearby, causing her to drive away. She arrives at a place where she watches a car ride by slowly. The girl decides to come close to it. The driver lets her in, mistaking her for a harlot. Sitting with him, she learns this is his first time doing something like this. He mentions his wife might take his life if she found out about it. On top of having a wife, the man also has two kids. We know Asia wants to pass on the app to him, but she now must find it harder to do because of his family. Later, she sits near her car. We don't know if she downloaded the application from hell into that man's phone. Soon Leo finds her. The scene changes to show Claudia with Filippo at a restaurant. She tells him she's worried about Asia. Filippo is also worried about her. He says it's been a few months since an accident happened. It is there that we learn the siblings lost their parents. If we recall Asia placing two roses near a door for their late parents. However, that's not why Claudia is worried about Filippo's sister. She starts telling him about the app that is scaring her. She is afraid that Asia is psychotic. Sitting in a car with Leo, Asia rejects a call from her brother. Leo asks if she passed on the app to someone and she says she did. It instantly brings her to tears. He now admits that he believes her. While they hug, Asia asks him to take her to Filippo's home. The next scene shows her sitting there. Claudia tells her that she told Filippo she was worried about her. She also told him Asia is not well. Filippo kneels to comfort his younger sister. Everything she sees is not real, he says. Claudia gives her a pill that the girl takes. When the couple goes to another room, Asia takes the pill out of her mouth. Afterward, she does something that would be far more to Claudia's disliking. She puts the lady's phone into Filippo's coat pocket. Then the siblings leave. Once Claudia is left alone, she searches for her phone. She suffers due to not being able to find it. Shortly after, Filippo drops his sister off. Leo meets her at the door of her building. He says he feels like there is something he should tell her, 
but he doesn't know if it's the right time. Fortunately, he doesn't have to tell her anything, she knows what he wants to say. He doesn't have to say anything more because she kisses him. Later, in her room, Asia goes live on the internet. She says it is her first time doing so, and also her last. She talks about having received a nap and what it is. The good girl urges people not to give their phones to strangers, even if it is for an emergency. She also says it isn't true that there is no way out. There is always a solution to every problem. We get to see her summer solution. Soon Leo drives by her building and exits his car because several people stand there for a reason unknown to him. Coming closer to the scene they have gathered to witness, Leo observes a grieving Filippo holding his sister. Of course, Leo cries too. This is how our story concludes, with Asia spreading awareness about the pestilent app. She, however, will take no more part in it.